on, praise the Lord, everybody. God has brought us through another year. Can you stand on your feet? Hallelujah. Can you just lift your voices to God? Shout hallelujah. 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 Shout thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. We glorify you and we bless your name. Amen. Jesus will. Jesus will. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Oh, 
Jesus will. Who will soothe our doubts and calm our fears? Jesus will. And who will answer the unanswered questions of 2023? Jesus will. And God, we thank you that you will. You will dry our tears. That you'll soothe our anxiety. Oh Lord, that you will heal our bodies. That you will heal our minds. That you will restore broken relationships, oh God. Jesus will. And who will move in this place to touch every heart and mind? Jesus will. We thank you, God, for Jesus. How he died on the cross for our sins. For who will save a wretched man or woman like us? Jesus will. Who will shed their blood? Jesus will. We thank you, oh God, for that answer on this morning. And now, God, we thank you for bringing us into this place to worship your name together. Lord, we've done it individually in our homes and in our cars and even on our jobs this week. But, Lord, now we've come together with like-minded people to worship and praise your name. And, Lord, we expect something from it. We're looking for it today, oh God, this last Sunday of the year. But, Lord, that doesn't matter to you because time is in your hands. And oh God, we say thank you. Thank you, oh God. And Lord, the healing and prayer list is before us. And Lord, they're wondering some things too. And Jesus will touch their situation. Speak to them. And Lord, not just to them, but to their caretakers. And to their families and to their loved ones. That they even be strengthened through this journey. We thank you, oh God. Bless now our pastor as he prepares to bring us the word. Help us to receive it, that it prick our hearts and minds, that we will forever be changed for the better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. The reading of God's holy word this morning, coming from the book of Luke, chapter 13, verses 6 through 9, New Revised Standard Version. Luke, chapter 13, verses 6 through 9. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years, I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hymn number 249, Blessed Assurance.
be seated in the presence of the Lord. Our God is great, and our God is greatly to be praised. Thank God for this day we have never seen before, realizing once this day is gone, we shall never, ever see it again. Yesterday is gone, and we don't know if we're going to see January 1, 2024 or not. Uh, but whatever happens, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. In the old thought and adage of my late great-grandmother, it is just another day's journey, and we are certainly glad about it. Well, we are right on the razor's edge of a brand new year. And I just believe if you can think of one good thing God did for you all year long, you ought to put your hands together. Can you just think of one good thing he did? Amen. What Did he do anything for you in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December? I can even, I can, I can. I, I can bring it closer than that. Can you think of one good thing God did for you today? If you can't think of nothing, uh, I can help you out. He woke you up this morning, put food on your table, and clothed you on your right mind. Come on, this is the, this is the day that the Lord has We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. My, my. Hey, Amen. If I would have told you you would make it this far in 2023, all that you went through this year, you would have told me that I lost my mind. But look at you. Looking good, smelling good, and even had the nerve to gain a little weight because God has been that good to us. Amen. 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 Real swiftly before we move on, because I feel like y'all kind of want to shout a little bit. And so let me get this out the way so I can let you go uh, and have at it. Uh, I do want to remind you that it is our tradition on New Year's Eve to have New Year's Eve and or watch night service. But by popular on-demand, I guess, uh, oh, 10 o'clock a.m. is it. All right. Now, after we get out of church today, uh, you can uh, enjoy the rest of your New Year's Eve. Some of you will be going to church. Others of you will be doing whatever you do on uh, New Year's Eve, uh, you grown and that's your business, but whatever you do, you make sure you do it responsibly, amen? Make sure you do it uh, responsibly, so we will not be having uh, New Year's Eve service on uh, tonight. Uh, also a reminder that New Year's Day is tomorrow, so the church office uh, will be closed, but we will resume our regular office hours on Tuesday, uh, January the 2nd. What I say? Y'all know January the second. What I say? Oh. All right. All right. Happy New Year. FMBC office closed January first and second. All right. All right. I'm just reading. I'm just reading what's up that thing. Amen. All right, and we reached our goal. I came to you last week and said, y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. Y'all don't even know what I'm, I didn't even finish the announcement. What I'm about, what I'm about to say? Last, year, last week, rather, I came to you and said we had raised $1,700 uh, for shoes for uh, teens in foster care. That was our goal doing our puppet performance a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we had raised 17 and I wanted to do a, at least 3,000. Uh, and I was informed in bold red letters that we reached our goal for the Puppet Ministries Justice Project. Amen. Now give it another hand that I confirmed what was already in your spirit. 
Amen. Also, uh, we have our children's church that is up and running uh, in the month of January. We will be recalibrating uh, so we can start the New Year's uh, off in full force. So the month of January, there will be no children's church, but we're going to pick right back up on it the first Sunday uh, in February. Amen. 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 To all of our visitors, uh, whether you are here with us or watching us online, we welcome you into the sacred space, whether it's cyber or literal sanctuary, uh, into our worship space today. If it was not for you, we do not believe that this uh, space would be as enhanced as it is, uh, that your presence here makes our experience that much more enjoyable and fruitful. So from our hearts to yours, we welcome you to the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. And if you are a first-time visitor uh, and you are in the sanctuary, but we have a God bless you, as my grandmother would call it, uh, that we want to give you at the end of worship right outside of those doors. So again, we say welcome to all of our visitors. And those who have been rocking with us for a while, you know that God has given us a simple yet profound, I believe, mission and vision that we like to remind ourselves of every Sunday. So at this time, let's make ready uh, to read. Y'all shouldn't have to read it. Now, it's simple on purpose. Can, y'all, can, can, can we do it without, if I tell them to take it off, could you do it? You could? All right. What's our mission? By valuing and affirming the image of God. Put it back up. Put it back up. All right. Our mission is to love God by valuing and affirming the image of God in all humanity. And our vision to be the loving and friendly church God has called us to be. Amen. Now it is given time. Make ready as our ushers and uh, our trustees come. Uh, and take their place as we prepare to give back to God just a portion of that which God has given unto us. Uh, not only am I anxious about giving, um, but since it's New Year's Eve, I know um, the corner going to give us some, some giving music um, that's going to make us want to give more than we expected to give. All right? And so let, let's get this giving declaration out the way so we can give and dance at the same time. All right? I give not just because I have it. I give because I am grateful. I give not just to be blessed. I give because I am already blessed. So what God gives me, I give a portion back unto God for the furthering of the mission and vision of God's church. And because I have the faith to trust God with my life, I also have the faith trust God with my finances therefore I give cheerfully I give generously and I give consistently amen God bless the giver as well as the give we thank you for the awesome privilege to be able to give to fertile ground on fertile soil bless our gifts in Jesus name we pray amen
Amen. How many of you know he reigns? How many of you know he reigns? Yes. We're going to have a little church this morning. Is that all right? Yes. All right. We need y'all to put your hands together. Put your hands together. Our God reigns. All hail, all hail, the King of Glory. All hail, the Great. Never, 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 never
can do is put your hands together. You might as well put your hands on it. Yeah. Come on, get that thing on your mind. That problem that you had, that you just couldn't seem to solve, and you prayed and you prayed, but just kept getting deeper involved. But remember that day you turned it over to Jesus? And you stop worrying about it, and you turn it over to the Lord, and guess what happened? Didn't he, didn't he work it out? Any witnesses on the side? Didn't he work it out? Any witnesses in the middle? Didn't he work that? I'm looking at you. I know what he did. I got the news. Didn't he work it out? Didn't he work it out? Yeah, they told me about you. I knew God was going to do it. Anybody on this side that know God worked it out? Yeah. All right, I got to preach. <laughs> yeah. Can I, y'all? Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell anybody else's business. Uh, nor am I qualified to give to give somebody else's testimony. But I will tell you, not allegedly. Uh, this is news I know that I. I met a young lady out in the foyer about two weeks ago, uh, and we prayed uh, that God bless her. I'm about to take off running. Uh, that God bless her with a home. Uh, and we, we got up to the ninth hour, and we didn't know what the Lord was going to do. And this wasn't a... a a wish this was a need um, and then I get a call from our church's administrator saying Rev she called me today and guess what happened <laughs> didn't I tell you
unhoused but came to church every Sunday. Unhoused and had the nerve to shout and clap and praise on Sunday. And if you be good to God, God will be good to you. And I'm talking to somebody right now. Sister with a spoon, C come back for a minute. Come back for a minute. Come here for a minute. I can't. I can't. I can't tell it like y'all can. And this is not official testimony service, so let's not start a line. But I can't tell it, I can't tell it like you. Can you tell them what you just told me? My goodness. God is good. Oh, this is my sister-in-law. She was uh, in the house by herself. People were calling to check on her and everything. And she couldn't answer. She couldn't answer anybody. She was on the floor for four days. Four days by herself. But she wasn't by herself. I had to put that back. I tell this because I couldn't keep it to myself. On the floor. Her phone. She couldn't answer her phone. She couldn't do anything. She just laid there on the floor for four days. The wonderful thing about it is she wasn't by herself. God was right there with her. Yeah. Right there with her. So God continues to bless in her. We went to see her. She recognized her and she speaks a little bit that was in the hospital. But the thing about it is God was with her. Yeah. He was with her. And I just had to tell y'all that because it's my husband's sister. And I just thank God that I just couldn't keep it to myself. To the high is bound to it flows. 
Chapter 13. Um, since, since y'all, since y'all shouted 15 minutes of my time up, I'll, I'll give you the Cliff Notes version. Luke chapter, chapter 13. You can make it these trials that you're going through God is gonna show you just what to do you can make it I don't care what's going on God won't let it last too long you're not in this thing alone you can you can make it 
you can make it. You will make it. I know you wanted it resolved by this time this year. But our thoughts are not God's thoughts, says the Lord. Nor God's ways as our ways, but God's thoughts and ways are higher than our thoughts and ways. That it may not happen when you want it. But you're going to want it whenever it happens. Big Mama used to put it like this. You may not come when you want it. But in the fullness of time, God is always on time. It would never, never lose. I don't know why I can't let that go. It'll never lose its power. me from the New Revised Standard Version of the scripture read to you Luke chapter 13 verses 6 through 9 again then he told this parable a man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came looking for fruit on it, found none. So he said to the gardener, see here for three years, I've come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still I find nothing. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting soil? He replied, sir, let it alone one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Sir, let it alone for one more year. Not just another year, not just another year. The scariest place to be is in the same place you were in last year. The scariest place to be is in the stagnant state of not growing. We get so used to where we are that we find clever language to describe our lack of movement. So we don't call ourselves stagnant. We call ourselves stable. When we in reality, we really confuse stability with stagnation. Because anything healthy and stable will always grow. You know, there is a difference between growth and swelling. Sometimes we've been so infected the 
trauma of our own toxicness that we swell, but we never grow up. All I'm struggling to tell you is that the scariest place to be is at the same place you were in last year. No matter how much you accomplish or do not accomplish in this year, you should be able to look back over your life and say, though everything did not go according to plan and everything I wanted to do, I did not do. But when I look at me and who I am, I'm not the same person I used to be. And I'm not in the same place I was. Because of my willingness to adjust, Mike Tyson put it like this, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. How do you handle life? Where life gives you its best punch. But if you are willing to adjust, when life hits you in the mouth, your testimony becomes I'm stronger, I'm wiser, I'm better. Because even though I had to go through it, I grew through it. I learned about myself that anything I go through, I can grow through. And I'm about done for real, for real with my little sermon, but I want you to help me preach to you. Can you lay your hands on yourself and speak to your 2024 and say, self, 2024 would not just be another year. Don't look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, put your hands on yourself and say, self, this year will not just be another year. I will not go through the motions. I would not quit when things get hard. I will not allow conflict to get me off track. I would not let what's going on around me distract me from what God is doing in me. People can talk. People can whisper. People can count me out. People can throw shade. They can give up on me. But no matter what, when I look in the review mirror, I will be able to say that I produced even when life hit me in the mouth. You just, as the apostolic come out of me, You just prophesied over your own self. I'm Baptist born and Baptist bred. And when I die, I'm going to be Baptist dead. But I feel the spirit of my Pentecostal brothers and sisters. And sometimes you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Sometimes you got to speak to your future. And say future my future will look a whole lot better than my past. As a matter of fact, if I can get real Pentecostal, Pentecostal, I, I, I see you in the spirit, in your future, and you look a whole lot better. No, you looking good today. You looking real good, actually. But you better take your phone out and take a picture because this day, would not be the best days of the rest of your life. But 2024, you're going to get stronger. And you're going to be wiser. And here is God's word for you. Going into a brand new year. You were not made to mark time. You were not made, nor do you exist, 
to run in place and be stagnant. But you were made to be fruitful and you were designed to be productive. You nor I have any more time to waste. And I mean this as urgent as I sound. The time for productivity and fruitfulness is now. And not only must that be an expectation you have for yourself, but that is God's expectation. And that is God's requirement for you that you produce. So this year will not be a year of perfection, but it will be a year of production. This year will not be a flawless year, but it will be a fruitful year. You don't have to be perfect to produce. You don't have to be flawless to be fruitful. You just have to be committed to what God has put in you. And that's what we find here in Luke's gospel. And in Luke's gospel, significance of bearing fruit is really the theme of Luke's gospel. In Luke 3, John the Baptist says this, the fruit of repentance. In John chapter 6, Jesus' sermon on the plain, he speaks of how a good tree produces good fruit. And similarly, a good person produces good from their hearts. In Jesus' parable of the sower, Jesus explains that those with the good hearts hear the word of God, hold fast to it, and patiently produces fruit. Luke's gospel is full of fruitful and productive examples and analogies and parables because the point of it all is that God is a God who places productivity and give us the capacity to do it. And so, an owner of a vineyard has a fig tree planted and put his gardener in charge of making the tree fruitful. Every day for three years, the owner of the vineyard goes to check the fig tree he had planted in his vineyard. And got absolutely no fruit. Every day. For three years. No fruit. To illustrate his point. Jesus turned a parable about a fig tree. That has not produced in three years. It was standing but no fruit on it. It was existing but it wasn't producing. It was there, but it was just taking up space. Sisters and brothers, don't let this be another year of us taking up space. Do something. Read something. Write something. Say something. Let your presence be known in the world by your productivity. And this is not just a word for individuals. This is a word for the community. Because here is the question God is asking us for 2024. If we were no longer here, would anybody ever recognize we were gone? If the Lord uprooted this church from this community with the community even recognized we were gone? Or are we just happy new year 
Anytime we shout a lot before I preach, you already know what's about to happen. <laughs> if we were not here, this church building, would we be missed? Or would the community not even recognize we were here in the first place? But in order for us to be better, you and I have to make a commitment that we're going to be better. And can I give you just three quick things? And depending on how y'all receive the first one, it may be just one thing. You ready? <laughs> to ensure this year is not just like any other year, I believe that this text teach us that you can produce in the place you are planted. Y'all hear me? You can produce in the place you are planted. Right where you are, you can produce. And a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and came seeking fruit on it, found none. The purpose of it being planted and placed is for it to bear fruit. The owner would not have had it placed if he thought the tree did not have the capacity to produce. The tree was planted and placed where the vineyard owner wanted it to be placed. And the owner would not place the fig tree in a place where production and fruitfulness was not possible. Y'all ain't hearing me. And some of us believe that our location limits us. We think that if we could just uproot ourselves, change where we are planted, then we can start to produce the way we are capable of. I hear you. If I just can get out of Fedville, if I just could leave and get another chance, or if I had the right kind of education or the right kind of connections, if I had the right kind of job, then I could be further along than I am now. And I'm not saying don't want better for yourself. I'm not saying thrive for something bigger and better. But do not be so preoccupied with where you are not that you fail to bloom where you are. Do not become so preoccupied with what you don't have that you fail to be productive with what you do have. That's why we've made it this far. Because your foreparents were productive with what they did have, even in all they didn't have. I mean, you didn't need a remote control. You didn't even need nods on the television. But without modern technology or without nods on the television, you don't trip, you don't cry, you don't complain. You get some wire pliers and make it do what it do. Because they was productive. Oh, some of y'all been bougie all your life. If you didn't have no meat to go between that bread, you put mayonnaise on it, a little sugar, and said, God, I thank you. If the antenna broke off of the television, y'all ain't feeling me here. You didn't, you didn't trip. You got one of them wire clothes hangers. And that was a lesson to us all that you can be productive right where you are. On that job that you already own, you can be productive. At the school you are going to, in the city that you are in, you can be productive in your place of pain. You can be productive even though you're having problems. You can be productive even though you're frustrated. You can be productive even though you don't want to be there. You can be productive even though they're getting on your nerves. You can be productive even though you say, if she say one more thing to me in 2024, 20, I'm going to... But even in that place, you can be productive. Can I give you a side order of Bible? Jeremiah chapter 29, uh, uh, the people are in exile. And then we know the text that says, I know the plans I have for you. 
But what we don't know is that the prophet tells Jeremiah to tell the people uh, that don't believe in those uh, poor pit pimps. D don't listen to those who are peddling you a false narrative of where you are and who God is. They going to tell you next year you coming out. Read Jeremiah 29. They're going to tell you uh, that in a few days it's going to all be over. They're going to tell you that 2022 was going to be the year for you and you're going to be set free in 2023 and God going to open a whole lot of doors in 2024. You know, that's how we got to do this, you know. The promise got to rhyme with y'all. Y'all do that in Fayetteville too. But Jeremiah tells God's people that you are where you are, but you're going to be here for a while. He says you're going to be here approximately 70 years. So you can do one or two things for 70 years. You can pout. You can whine. You can say, woe is me. You can say, get me out of this. Or you can be productive. Are y'all listening to me here? Jeremiah tells God's people, check this out, build houses, plant gardens, Fellas, enjoy your wives, have children, and your children will have children. In other words, though you're going to be here for a while, you can look back over your time where you don't want to be and say that I did not waste time taking up space, but I can bloom where I'm planted. And if you are faithful over a few things, God will be able to trust you with more. If you are faithful where you are, God will blossom you where you want to be. All I'm trying to tell you is put gas in that raggedy car before God bless you with a new one. Clean that one bedroom apartment before God bless you with a mansion. Give to God when you're making $200 a week. Then God will give you $2,000 a week. Just be faithful where you are. Isn't that good news? Don't wait to produce. You can produce now. The vineyard owner had the fig tree planted where he wanted it. In his vineyard. Can I tell you what ought to motivate you to be productive? Is because where you are don't belong to you. You are planted not only where God placed you, but you are planted in the midst of what already belongs to God. And if you could be a good steward over what God has placed in you, and he who has begun a good work in me shall perform it until the day of Christ. Greater is he who is in me than he. So you know what my prayer is in 2024? Oh, 2023, I pray, Lord, give me, give me, give me, give me. But my prayer in 2024 is Lord, make me, make me, make me, make me. Because if you give me before you make me, then what you will give me will eventually have me instead of me having it. But if you make me and create within me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me and purge me with hyssop, then I can be a better steward. You can produce for your planet. And you can produce when you have the proper perspective. The context of this parable is that the listeners of the parable approaches Jesus about a calamity that has happened. It is only mentioned in Luke 3. I don't know exactly what it was, but it was 
Herod mingling sacrifices blood with others who belong to God and the temple or the building falling on some 18 people and the listeners of the parable wants to know basically did they do something wrong? Were their sins greater than other people's sins? And Jesus' response was no. Unless you repent or change your mind about why things happen, you will meet a certain fate. In other words, don't always worry about why stuff go on with other people. Just have the proper perspective of what I'm doing in your life. So here is a spiritual discipline that you and I need to cultivate for ourselves in 2024. I'm done because this is going to be deep, deep. The spiritual discipline that you and I must cultivate for ourselves in 2024 is, y'all ready? The spiritual discipline. We have to cultivate for ourselves. In 2024, it's the spiritual discipline of minding your own business. <laughs> that you pray that God gives you the discernment not to see what's going on in somebody else's life but give you an inward discernment that you'll know what's going on in your own life. Because sometimes you'll be tempted to be nosy so you can compare your mess with somebody else's mess so your mess don't look as messy. But maybe if you tend it to the plank in your eye, then you wouldn't be so focused on the speck in somebody else's eye. Have you ever noticed that people with specks don't worry about people with planks, but people with planks always see somebody else's speck? How can you see the plank in somebody else's eye and you got a whole forest in your eye? Jesus says, clean out the forest in your eye first, then maybe you can help somebody else. But the reason you got so much plank build up in your own life is because you're worried about too much. Now look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, no, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Don't do that, never mind, never mind. Put your hands on yourself again and say, self, mind your own business. No, 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 it's in the text. Production will happen if you realize you got to tend to you, he says to them, don't worry about why calamity happened to them because it could also happen to you. So since you don't know if or when it's going to happen, make sure you are productive while you're still here. Somebody else can do a whole lot with that space you're occupying if you're not going to do nothing with it. Somebody else got a plan for the space you take for granted. If you ain't going to do nothing with it, somebody wish they had the voice you had, but you don't want to use it. Somebody happily take your place. Somebody wish they had the gift to write like you have the gift to write, but you don't want to use it. Somebody else would gladly take what you don't want. In the cemetery, there's a whole lot of books that ain't been written. A whole lot of songs that had not been composed. Poems that have gone unread. Voices that would never be heard, not because it wasn't in them, but because they were just taking up space. Every year is the year of everything. You can produce if you realize God has been patient with you. For three years, the owner was going looking, nothing. Year two, nothing. That's three times 365, whatever that is, you do it. That's how many days. And one day the owner got fed up. 
It says, pluck it up. Throw it away. It's taking up space. I could put something here that would be fruitful. Somebody spoke up on behalf of the fig tree and says, no, 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 no. Here is the text. Give it one more year. And what if 2024 is representative of that one more year? That one more chance that God has given. Because this ain't a second chance. This is the fourth chance. That no, no, that ain't true. Whatever, whatever 365 times three is that many chances. And that's why I praise God. Because God is a God. Not a God of a second chance. But this text teaches us that God is a God of another chance. And when I use that chance, he's a God of another chance. And another chance. And another chance. Don't pluck it up. Let me dig around it. Let me tend to it. Here's my favorite part. Maybe because I'm crazy in the brain. Uh, put some manure around it. And when I put that around it. Then if it don't, if it is, if it don't grow through the mess. If I put it in a stinking situation and it stays the same, then next year cut it down. But I promise you, vineyard owner, that if you let me tend to it and do what's right by it and make the environment conducive for its growth this time next year, December 31st, 2024, I guarantee you when you look at her, and you look at him again, it's going to produce fruit. And here is God's word as I close this little sermon. You ready? We ought to shout because we're going to mind our own business. And we ought to shout because our testimony has been flawed the whole time. And when your testimony has been flawed the whole time, it's 2024, let me do it, about to be 2024, the last day of 2023, so let me try to end it with a shouting point. That not only are we going to mind our own business, but we're going to realize, 2024, that we've been given a flawed testimony. And a flawed testimony will hinder your praise. Because our testimony has been that God don't bless no mess. When the reality is God will create mess. Just to show you how blessed you are. And I wonder is there anybody in here that can testify that 2023 got a little messy. 2023 didn't always smell like roses. 2023 wasn't always me sitting and floating on cloud nine. But 2023 landed me some messy situation. I grieved in 2023. I cried in 2023. I got mad at God in 2023. I questioned God in 2023. I stopped believing God in 2023. I told everybody that this God thing is a farce in 2023. But when I look back over my life, I realized it was in those messy situations that God got God's best out of me. That's why if I told you you was going to go through everything you went through, you would have thought you weren't going to be able to make it. But God showed you something you didn't even know about yourself. And that is you can grow and be productive even in spite of the mess. Because you can use the mess as fertilizer. You can use the mess to help you grow. The scariest place to be is the same place you were in 
last year. Set goals, but learn how to adjust when life punches you in the mouth. Learn how to course correct even when life punches you in the mouth. And if we learn how to, in the words of some of y'all too young to remember this. In the words of Donnie Simpson, used to host a show called Video Soul. Y'all don't remember that? Y'all don't remember that. <laughs> that if you try to be productive and shoot to, for the moon, what he used to say if y'all know what it is. Y'all read that in a book. <laughs> Even if you miss you'll be among the stars. If when God does for you what you want God to do, you can then say to God be the glory for the thing that God has done. How can I give thanks for the things he has done for me? Things so undeserved just to prove God's love for me. And the voices of a million angels cannot express my gratitude. All that I am and all that I hope to be I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Just let me live so I can be used by thee. And if I fail to give you all the praise, I owe it all to Calvary. To God be the glory. For the things he has done. I don't know if I see midnight tonight. But to God be the glory. For the things he has done. I don't know if I'm going to eat black eyed peas tomorrow. But to God be the glory. For the things he has done. Money may be funny. Change may be strange. Your credit may can't get it. But to God be the glory. For the things. He has done. Cry a little bit in 2024. Take time for yourself a little bit in 2024. If you don't feel like getting in the bed on Saturday morning and you can afford not to, stay in the bed sometime. Process it. Weep and mourn, but don't do it like those who have no hope. Get up in the morning. Pull the shades up. Let God's sunshine hit you in the face. Put your head up, square your shoulders back, and say, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Happy New Year. Look how far you've made it. Happy New Year to you. God bless you. You did well. You did well. You did well. You did good. You did good. Don't be too hard on yourself. You did a great job. And you will do an even better job in 2024. As we stand all over the building, the doors of God's church are now open. The day that you hear God's voice, since God is speaking, 
not harden your heart. If you want to accept Christ as Lord and Savior or you already love God, you know Christ and you have no doubt that you know God and God knows you but you need a church home and you don't want to enter into next year without a physical space you can grow and be nurtured. If that is you, we offer Christ to you and we will be glad to have you. If you're in here, will you come? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. You may be seated if you can. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. done great things, for he has done great things. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, let God hear your voices. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I will. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is with much obliged. We thank you for the 365 days you have breathed on us. Every day hasn't been sunny. As a matter of fact, there's been 
quite a few dark days. So many sleepless nights. We can't even count on. But our testimony yet remains that you've been better to us than we are capable of being to our own selves. Keep holding us. Please don't let us go. Continue to order our steps. Make your will be known. And if it be your will for us to see 2024, our commitment to you is that we're going to try to live better for you next year than we did on this year. Some tears will be shed, but we're going to trust you. And we're going to be productive right where you have planted us. Now may the love of God and the justice of God and the sweet communion of God's spirit continue to rest with us and to rule with us and abide with us, yea, now and even forevermore. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Hug somebody and tell them Happy New Year. Prophesy. You know they're going to make it. Tell them Happy New Year. Have a good week. Have a good week.